Warning, this video contains extreme profanity. It's definitely not for the faint-hearted. In other words, please enjoy. Hello and welcome to this review of my safe type keyboard. Yes, this is a real thing. This keyboard was a donation and it's such a weirdo that I decided to make it my end of year video in which I traditionally do something special. And in this case, special means that it's basically a peeled cunt potato. This keyboard must be the pinnacle of ergonomic design because rarely have I ever seen such a mess of a keyboard. To place this in context, I type with floating hands, so cryptic bullshit like this doesn't really give me any benefit, which is why videos about keyboards like this tend to turn into large-scale swear fests. And this one is no exception, because whatever apocalyptic dingleberry came up with this might want to have their brain unscrambled. I guess the idea behind this keyboard is that your wrists are at a more comfortable angle when vertical, like those vertical mice you can get. So to avoid you having to rotate your wrists, they rotate the keyboard instead. In the case of this keyboard, it's a little bit more esoteric than other ergonomic keyboards though. See, although tented keyboards already exist, this is the first fully vertical one I've come across, or at least the only one I know of that's locked in place, because no, it can't be adjusted. In fact, they have the goal to present this as a feature. As the website reads, it cannot be adjusted improperly by the user because God forbid someone would be comfortable using it. But despite that, the cock-juggling asshats that designed this thing must have known they were really crossing some lines here because they provided the absolute weirdest feature I've ever seen on a keyboard. A pair of adjustable mirrors to see what's going on. <laughs> They look just like rear view mirrors on a car and they can be repositioned in much the same way. You can tilt them horizontally like this or slide them vertically. Now, these are as good as worthless if you don't happen to be at the right angle. Moreover, they barely allow you to see any significant part of the keyboard because they're much too small. They did rotate some, but not all, of the legends on the keycap so that you can see what's going on. At least, if your hand doesn't get in the way, obviously, which is another issue they appear to have just ignored and hope nobody would notice. And if you don't get affused by the mirror effect, obviously. I just still can't get my head around these things. The fact that they felt compelled to include these is really a confession of guilt, the way I see it. It really shows that the designers knew nobody would ever be able to use this keyboard properly. The numpad and nav cluster are in the middle. They probably correctly assumed that these would have been impossible to locate with your fingers and would have made the board even taller as well, while well, it's already a very bulky cunt as it is. I mean, look at the size of the box I keep it in relative to those of the others, and that's only barely too big for it. It is, in fact, about 20 centimeters tall, or an Imperial unit's attack of the 50-foot woman. At this height, it's so badly in its own way that reaching for the numpad and nav cluster is extremely cumbersome and annoying, which makes using this in many office capacities, you know, the sort of work that tends to land you RSI in the first place, almost useless. You're better off typing on a touchscreen using your dick, you know, at least that sounds more pleasurable than using this. I mean, what is the point of a detestable douche nozzle like this? It's as useless as a fucking appendix. I can say in all honesty that my frustration with this cunt muffin tit basket is 100% genuine because I used this thing for a whole week, including for gaming, which I'll touch on in a bit. In fact, off pissness is at critical levels here and I couldn't operate it for more than a day at a time maximum. Basically, you have no idea what you're doing or where everything is and typing speed, which is normally around the 70 words per minute mark for me, is slowed down to a crawl. In fact, the typing demonstration at the end is by a considerable margin the slowest one yet. I recorded it before I started testing it as well to show you my first reaction to it. It's terrible, you'll love it. I didn't improve much after using it for a week either. It still takes me half an hour to write my own name. Fucking shit, felching, turbo, twat, flabby, ass cheeks, piss, keyboard, cunt, piece of I figured my best chance of using this keyboard with minimal interference was during gaming, because you only use a few keys and your fingers are more or less permanently glued to the keyboard, so it's easier to keep them on the right position. But no, this doesn't work either. First of all, as soon as you move off of these six keys or so, even just to chuck a grenade or change to the pulse gun or melee someone in the gonads, you lose track of the keys and it all goes to shit immediately. 
But even if you restrict yourself to those keys, I found another problem. See, all this time you have to keep your hands in place, but that means holding them up all the time, which gets super tiring after a while. I guess you could kind of grab the keyboard like this, but this restrict your hands movement way too much to be able to reach to the top key, so I end up just kind of resting my thumb on this ledge here, which is just about as uncomfortable as it sounds. What asinine fruitcake thought that this titty fucking tur burglar was a good idea. On the website they even have the absolute barefaced cheek to claim that I'm now in the most relaxed typing position possible. Yeah, sure, and Hitler built the pyramids, fucking albatrossing multi-orifice dick guillotine. The guillotine, sorry, the keyboard weighs 1.8 kilograms, or in imperial units, attack of the mutant 50 foot kebab. It appears to be mostly plastic, or at least it is on the outside, I dare not open it for fear of whatever monsters and cyclopean horrors lurk inside this Pandora's box. The mirrors are very flimsy though, they can tuck into these little compartments on the inside when not in use, which works like this like so, but they feel very rickety, and I know from someone else that these reflective parts can come off as well, they're just glued on. The keycaps aren't exactly great either, they're lasered ABS, which isn't very durable, and the F and J keys have these really weird homing bumps, or rather, homing arches on them. I mean, I get it, the designers figured it was so hard to find anything on this cum-gargling fountain vagina that they made the bumps extra obnoxious. I mean, why not just put glue on the key so you can't even move at all, fucking dick cheese mongering gerbil fuckers! Overall, this testicular toaster is not just ridiculous, but also completely unusable. I mean, surely even if you're an ergo person, this is not the way forward. I know some people benefit from split or tented keyboards, but this thing with its purely vertical stance that you deliberately can't adjust, and with the nav and numpads so awkwardly located in this weird valley over here, it's just a big, wet, eggy brain fart that someone unfortunately happened to shit into existence, as if they did it on a college day or after a piss-up that got out of hand after the 80th Jaeger bomb. Cock it in bollocks with sprinkles on top, what human question mark came up with this? Another jewel is their statement that the safe type ergonomic keyboard is the only keyboard that can place the user in a position that is completely orthopedically neutral, trademark. How in the hell of the oily dragon is orthopedic neutrality a trademark? Also, they mention that it's only available in black. Yeah, I can see that. Thanks, Tits McGee. It costs 300 fucking dollars as well, which I really can't see where it comes from. It's just a $10 keyboard formed in a differently shaped mold with some ultra cheap car mirrors stuck on. You can buy some really high end keyboards with money like this. I mean, even those great Hall Effect and Opto Electric keyboards I reviewed cost significantly less than this. I mean, I know Ergo keyboards are usually more expensive, but most of the time at least they have the decency to be of higher end manufacture to back it up, and or being highly adjustable. Well, this is clearly neither. And to top it all off, the switch is a rubber dome. It's like the last little kick in your side when you're already down, or the last drop of diarrhea in the shit Sunday. And they're not nice domes either, like BTCs or Scorpius domes, no, these are stiff and mushy as hell like crappy toffee. In fact, even if it was just a normal keyboard with these domes in it, it would have been a terrible piece of shit. And it's rather unsightly too, in fact, I think it looks absolutely... HIDEOUS! It's so ugly that if I printed a picture of it, it would hang itself. It just looks like something I would draw with my left hand, just bleh. I mean, I know it's supposed to be an object of utility, I get it, but did it have to be this repulsive? Overall, some people doubtlessly get comfort from using it, just like some people get pleasure from eating poop, but for me it has only brought suffering, and that a lot. Typing has never been so slow, cumbersome, uncomfortable, or stressful for me. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. Happy holidays and see you in the next year. Until that time, here's a typing demonstration of my first attempt to type on this miserable, minge waffle, cunt basket, dig nugget, piss nozzle, fuck ass, poop shoot licking camembert. Okay, there we go. Oh god, this is fucking awful. <laughs> oh god. This 
is this
just <laughs> wow.